We all know that AOC and this crowd are a bunch of communists. They hate Israel. They hate our own country. They're calling the guards uh, along our border, the Border Patrol agents, concentration camp guards. Uh, they accuse people who support Israel of doing it for the Benjamins. Uh, they're anti-Semitic. They're anti-America. Don't get down. Aim higher. We don't need to know anything about them personally. Talk about their policies. Senator Aim higher. Uh, Lindsay, you're, you're, you call Americans in Congress communists and you say they hate America? And then your punchline to that is aim higher? John Meacham, the term McCarthyism has been thrown around recklessly for 70 or so years, uh, uh, 60, yeah. 65 years. Yeah. But just like Donald Trump's language was lifted directly from something that David Duke might say, that would, uh, there's not even a stretch here. Uh, Lindsey Graham led with a McCarthyism charge of these four Americans, these four people of color, duly elected people, he called them communists, and said they hated America. It yeah. might be a good time to remind people watching that Lindsey Graham is not a backbencher in the House like he was when I knew him and he pretended to be conservative. Lindsey Graham is now the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I've got to say, I've got to say, John, that tirade yesterday, that's not just a new low point for Lindsey Graham. That may be a new low point for the Republican Party under Donald Trump. And it cries out, doesn't it, for the Joseph Welch moment, uh, which was the, the turning point in, uh, in 1954 after McCarthy had launched his uh, campaign against communism on Lincoln's birthday in Wheeling, West Virginia in uh, uh, 1953. He said, I have the names of 205 communists in my pocket. It turned out he didn't have any. Uh, but it was, it was a moment of fear, it was a moment of anxiety. And I must say, when I, when I saw that sort of flash by uh, yesterday, I thought it was a joke at first, because I thought, surely Senator Graham is not actually saying that. One of the things it does tell us, doesn't it, is the demographic to which Trump and Senator Graham and the other enablers are speaking. Because there hasn't been a communist as a live threat to the United States since the presidency of George Herbert Walker Bush, nearly 30 years ago, right? Uh, and so, almost exactly 30 years ago. The Berlin Wall fell 30 years ago this year. And we won the Cold War. And we won it because of Republicans, and we won it because of Democrats, and we won it because of our allies, and we won it because we were not isolationist, and we were not xenophobic, and we were not nativist. We made the case for an idea not for the fascistic combination of blood and soil. It was an idea yeah. that we are created equal. And as Lincoln said in August of 1864, in a speech that I don't think is as well known as it should be, he said that the Civil War was being fought not least for there to be a fair chance for Americans' intelligence, enterprise, and industry to rise as far as they can. And that's not an idea that requires a particular skin color. In fact, it's entirely predicated, as we've come to understand it, on its universality. And that's the America that won the Cold War. So this is not some <coughs> soft, liberal, no. pinko conversation. This is not some lefty ACLU caricature. It's simply history that we have grown stronger the more widely we've opened our arms. 
Well, why and, that and can't? With, why we can't tell yeah. that story? We have to tell that. And I think, sorry, I, I just think that's the story Joe Biden needs to tell. That's the story the Democrats need to tell, because it has the virtue, as Dr. Kissinger used to say, of being true. Yeah. Well, you know, <clears throat> Michael Steele, we've known Lindsey for a long time. I've known him since 94. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't recognize this person. Uh, I know he has a primary coming up. I, I just want, I keep wondering how much lower he's going to go. Yesterday was, was a real low, low point. Yeah. This, <clears throat> is a, this is a guy... This is a guy who said that the election in, in May of 2016 said if Donald Trump were nominated uh, to, to the Republican Party nomination for president, he would destroy the Republican Party and the Republican Party would, destroy, would deserve it. And this is what Lindsey wrote in June of 2015. He said, to my friends in the other party, our differences are real and we will debate them. But you are not my enemy. You are my fellow countrymen. And we see the absolute corruption of Lindsey Graham with the absolute power of Donald Trump. He goes from saying, you are not my enemy, you are my friend, to saying that four women of color are communists, are communists who hate America. I mean, is there... A better description, Michael Steele, of just how much Donald Trump corrupts people that are around him? Well, let, let's start with the truth that hypocrisy has no greater friend than Lizzie Graham. Uh, and I think he has proven that more and more, uh, certainly since the passing of John McCain, um, that uh, he needed something to latch on to. And he's latched on to um, Trumpism uh, and in all of its ilk uh, and forms. Um, and so, but it also does, Joe, to your point, uh, clarify the moment for us, uh, as, uh, as our great historian friend John Meacham uh, often uh, does in, in sort of relating history to the present day. Uh, <clears throat> these present moments uh, are clarifying for us in a real way. We know now where the lines of demarcation are between a, a civil, proper American society that's looking forward and one that wants to retrench and, and, and sit in fear and, and disengage, not only from the world, but from communities within our own uh, space, within our American family. Uh, I dare say that Lindsey Graham in walking across the street uh, to uh, the House would not say what he said to the face of those four women, because he doesn't have what it takes to do that in the main. In, re in real life, he would never say it to their face. And that tells you everything you need to know about the cowardice of this moment and the cheap political thrills they get from sitting at Donald Trump's knee. Caddy K, um, Donald Trump retweeted Lindsay's comments, of course. And you, many of our allies in Europe during the height of McCarthyism were horrified by what was going on in the United States. They thought the United States had lost their mind. Of course, many are thinking the same thing now. Uh, but here you have one of the most powerful members of the United States Senate accusing four women of color of being communists just, just out of thin air. Again, every, uh, the, the charge is every bit as baseless as McCarthy's charges in the 1950s and saying they hate America. I mean, my God, uh, not exactly the image we want to be projecting across the world right now. There is no communist threat in the United States. Lindsey Graham needs a quick lesson in political theory on what communism actually means. I'm not sure he could even define it as a concept, but it certainly isn't existent. And it's certainly not there in the United States Congress. These people did not get elected as communists. And the idea that they can't say that there are flaws in the American system, that that somehow makes them unpatriotic, is an absurdity. And it's chilling when you think about the countries around the world where it's not possible 
impossible to criticize, where we see the erosion of democracy happening before our eyes in countries like Poland, in countries like Hungary, where democratic norms and freedoms are being chipped away at and people are being told they cannot criticize the country, that that is somehow unpatriotic. Is that the way that America wants to go right now? Right now, we're at a moment where liberal Western democracy, the notion that we've understood for the last 70 years, is under threat. We need the United States to lead the charge not be the country that is leading it in the opposite well, direction towards more authoritarianism. And we need people like, I've just seen that John Thune, senator from North Dakota, has finally stood up, but it's two days late. Why did it right. take two days for John Thune to come out and criticize the president's comments? What's he been thinking? Did he need to go to history books? Did he need to spend 48 hours studying whether this was okay or not? It's pretty clear, straight up, whether it's okay well, or not. And it's I, late yeah. now for Republicans to step in. Well, I, I will, Sam, I will, th I will yeah. thank God for small favors. I'm glad John did that. And yeah. I hope Lindsey Graham will back off of his comment uh, accusing these four women of being, quote, communists. Go sure. ahead. Well, I, you know, in this moment, I'm reminded of a famous John McCain moment, and not the one that everyone thinks about, which is uh, him uh, correcting the woman who thought Barack Obama was not born in America. It's a different one. It was in 2012. Uh, John McCain went to the floor of the U.S. Senate uh, to defend Huma Abedin, a longtime Hillary Clinton aide, who was then being accused of being associated with the Muslim Brotherhood by Michelle Bachman, who was running for president at the time. He went to the floor of the Senate to denounce uh, that type of accusation that Bachman had made. And it took a little bit of courage for him to do so, obviously, but uh, that's what John McCain liked to do. I, and God knows, you know, we lionized John McCain, but it was in these moments um, that he really deserved his lionization. And I guess all of this, to me, has really uh, sparked a question, and Joe, I'd be very curious for your thoughts on this, which is, you know, Trumpism is obviously taking hold of the Republican Party. <clears throat> And my question for you is, does it, you know, does it survive Trump? Is this the type of Republican no. Party that exists after no. Trump is gone? No. no. Okay. It no. Does, why, it's, why do it's you say that? Trump. It, 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 no. And, and that's, and that's the stupidity of all of this for right. Lindsay and exactly. for all of these other people. Do, do we, we have seen what happened to Sean Spicer. What do you think is going to happen to Sarah Huckabee Sanders? These people that come into the White House for Donald Trump, they do not understand. What I told a, a, a top person in George W. Bush's administration in 2005, I said, you think he is going to be around here forever. He's not. Protect yourself because he's going to go and he'll take care of himself. But you're going to be left holding the bag on Katrina, holding the bag on all of these other things. Donald Trump will not survive. Uh, the Trumpism will not survive Donald Trump. And Mike Barnacle... If Nikki Haley is the next nominee of the Republican Party, you watch the people that that mm -hmm. debase themselves for Donald Trump will be left running for the hills. They will have no future in Washington, D.C., because you know what? If they lied for Donald Trump as much as they lied for Donald Trump, and Nikki Haley, by the way, didn't. She stood up to Trump and his aides time and time again. She stood up to Vladimir Putin time and time again. But Nikki Haley can't have people around her that were lying constantly for Donald Trump. She, it is, it, Trumpism will not survive. That is why the day trading of Lindsey Graham and the day trading of Kellyanne Conway and the day trading of Sarah Huckabee Sanders and the day trading of Sean Spicer was so short-sighted. Yeah, Joe, you know, <clears throat> Lindsey is rather a pathetic friendless figure in Washington. But what he was saying yesterday, it seems, you're seeing now the outlines of the Trump campaign, the re-election campaign. And the outline is based on fear, it's based on race, and basically what they're saying is, what Donald Trump is saying is, they hate me. They hate the United States of America. They hate you. They hate us. That's the derivative, that's the formulation, the foundation of his campaign.